Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use this RK4 code to solve a system of differential equations. Now, the way that the algorithm works is that it solves the equation numerically by calculating the variable values at each time step. The way that we're going to learn how to use this MATLAB code is basically by going through an example. So this is uh, the example system of equations that we're going to use. These equations describe the behavior of an electrical circuit, which I explained in a previous video. So if you're interested in where these equations come from, I've included a link to that video in the description so you can go check it out. But for now, we're just going to accept these equations as they are and learn how to solve them with this MATLAB code. Here's the system of equations we're going to solve. So we've got five differential variables, x1 to x5 and each one is described by a differential equation. And we also have a bunch of algebraic equations that we want to solve. So we've got this q in, which is a function of time, and this is just given to you. Um, so, so you'll have that, um, just some function of time that's given to you. And then we have an equation that describes the relationship between q in and p in. And so you could solve this equation and, and solve for p in. And then we have equations uh, that describes q1 and q2, and, and these are variables that that are used in the differential equations, and the rest of the variables are constants. Okay, so now let's see how we implement these equations into this MATLAB code. There are two files in the in the MATLAB code. One is called rk4.m, and the other one is called fsub. So in the rk4.m file. Uh, this is the place where you can set your simulation parameters. And so a couple of things you want to set is you want to set the time step size. So, you know, how finely you want to step through time. And then you want to set how many time steps you want to simulate. And so that you you just put, it in, put in the number here. And then here uh, you can specify how often you want to save the simulation results. So you might not want to save every single time step because you might want to use very fine time step uh, to get uh, accurate simulation, but then you only want results once in a while. And so you can say that, okay, I only want to save the result every time, every 10 time steps. So you can specify that here. And then uh, these two lines allow you, here's, you could specify the number of variables the uh, differential variables that you have in your system of equations. So in this case, we have five variables that are described by uh, differential equations. So I'm going to put five here. And then here you can specify uh, how many additional variables you want to keep track of. And so um, basically uh, in the results, the values of variables will be automatically recorded. And if you want to write out additional results, uh, you have to specify how many additional uh, variables do you, you want to keep track of. That So you put that here. And then here you put in th the initial values for your differential variables. So from x1 to x5, um, the, all of these values have an initial value. So x1 to x5, um, each one of these differential variables have an initial value. So you want to specify what the initial values are uh, here. So that's all you do with this rk4.m file. And then uh, where you put in the actual equations, uh, your system of equations, you put it in this f sub file here. There's just a few things you need to know about how this function works. So the first thing is that you have access, you have direct access to all of your x variables. So x1 to x5, you can access their value at any time. So for example, uh, if I want to enter this equation here, uh, I want to access x4, then I could just actually use, um, so all the x values are stored in the x array. So I could just write uh, x4 right here, and so I could directly access uh, the value of the x's. So here is another example. I want to use x1 to keep track of time, so I could just directly set time equals to x1. So I have access to this uh, x variable directly inherently in this function. Anything that's not an x, uh, it's, if it's a variable that's not, a, not an x, uh, you you don't have direct access to it. You're going to have to define it um, before you use it. So all of this code here uh, defines uh, all the other variables 
uh, that we use. So these these code basically describes the algebraic equations to give you the non x variables that you're going to have to use in your differential equations. Okay. And the next thing is, uh, by the end that you finished with this code, you're going to have to have defined all of these differential equations. And these differential equations, the value of, the, of these differential equations are stored in the F array. And so F5 is the equivalent of DX5 DT and F4 is DX4 DT. Okay, so, so in this F5 here, I want to assign this uh, F array such that I enter all of my differential equations. So F5 is DX5 DT which is described by this equation, P in minus X4 divided by L. And so I want to, that's what I put here. Uh, that's what I want to put here for X5, which is P in minus X4 divided by L, which is two. Okay, so what you want to make sure is just by the end of this file, uh, you want to prescribe all of your differential equations into your F arrays. And then the last thing is that, remember, um, in this particular case, we said we wanted to uh, keep track of two additional variables. And so in this case, I want to write out what this QN actually is that I calculated, and I want to write out PN. Okay, so once you finish with that, you save this file, you go back to the RK4.n, and you run it. So you click Run, and it's finished running. And so your results are going to be saved in these two uh, quantities or these two variables. And so the results would include your uh, this x1 to x5, and then result add will include the two additional variables that you want to keep track of. So let's just take to see take a look to see what's in here. Um, so x this would be x3. So if I were to plot it, this shows you what x3 looks like over time. And then if I want to see x5, this is x5. And if I want to see the result add, then here's, remember, the results are, the additional results we have are qn and pn. So the first one is qn. And if we plot it, you see that it is indeed a periodic function uh, as we specified before.